question mark shows me the list of commands available at this level. So as an example, I can use the command enable to go to the manager exec context or manager level. Exit allows me to terminate the console telnet session. Logout will do something similar. Menu allows me to run a menu which can be useful but in this course we're concentrating on the CLI. Ping will allow us to ping remote devices in a network. Show will allow us to view information on the system. Trace route allows us to find the path to a remote device. If you're from a Cisco background you'll notice that the interface is very similar to a Cisco router or switch. So to go to manager level I could type EN notice question mark changes it to enable question mark tells me to hit carriage return. Exit takes me back to operator level. EN tab completes the command. Question mark here shows me that there are more commands available than what was available in operator level. I can type the famous command conf t or configure terminal to go to the global configuration level. Exit will take me back. However on an HP switch you don't have to type configure terminal or conf t you can just simply type con c o n to go to global configuration mode unlike on a Cisco switch or router. So what you'll notice if I use question mark here that some of these commands will be available in other modes. Notice here as an example we have a command like reload. So in this mode I could type the command reload. I don't have to be for instance in user mode or enable mode to type reload. I could also go into an interface so I could type interface notice question mark gives me help and let's say interface Ethernet 1 or rather interface E1. You'll notice when I use question mark here I also have the reload command. So question mark doesn't just give you help for that mode. Commands can be typed in any mode. There's no need to use the command do. You could for instance ping directly from this mode or trace route from this mode. So I could do the command show Notice lots of show commands and I could look at the running configuration. So that's the default configuration on the switch. What I'd like you to note please is by default on VLAN 1 IP address DHCP boot P is enabled. That's a nice feature to be aware of. If you plug an HP switch into a network with the default configuration it will automatically send out a DHCP request for an IP address and if a DHCP server is available it will get an IP address. If I type the command show IP as an example at the moment no IP address has been allocated to the switch but be aware DHCP is enabled by default. Just to show you some other options control Z notice takes me back to global config mode control Z again takes me to manager level if I type the command CO tab notice I'm given multiple options. I need to say CON to specify configure. So tab completion is available. It's slightly different to what Cisco guys will be used to on Cisco switches but you do get full help and the interface is very similar to Cisco. The best way to learn the CLI of devices like HP switches is just to try various options. So without further ado I'm going to put this switch into the topology and let's build the full topology. This is what our E-Series lab topology looks like. Firstly I have a Cisco 857W router which is acting as a DHCP server and also connecting our internal network to the internet. We then have a 5406ZL switch which is going to act as our layer 3 router in the topology. Later on I'm going to show you how to create VLANs and we are going to do the inter-VLAN routing on the 5406. We then have a 3500 YL 24G switch as well as two 2610 switches. This is the initial topology that we're going to configure. Later on we're going to introduce more devices like PCs and servers putting these devices in separate VLANs and enabling communication between all the devices. 
going to tell net to the Cisco router login. And at the moment, if I do the command show IP DHCP binding, you'll notice that there are only two devices with IP addresses. A device with an IP address of 9 and 10. What I'm going to do now is turn on the HP switches. And remember, by default, HP switches will use DHCP to try and acquire an address. So these four devices should boot up, do a DHCP request, and they will receive an IP address from the Cisco router. These devices have no configuration on. So all interfaces are in VLAN 1. And thus at the moment we have a flat network. So hopefully every device will boot up, get an IP address, and then I'll be able to tell it to each device to configure it. So the switches have been turned on, and hopefully shortly we'll see DHCP requests on the Cisco router. On the Cisco router as an example, I can do the command term one, and then I can do the command debug IP DHCP server, and let's look at events. Now there's some other debug information here. We won't worry about that. But hopefully we'll see shortly that if we do the command show IP DHCP binding, that more IP addresses have been leased by the devices. So here in the output, you can see that there's assignment of addresses and discovery of addresses. So you can see IP addresses are being allocated. Notice here's 14, there's 13, 12, and 11. So if we do the command, show IP DHCP binding, you can see that IP addresses 11 to 14 have been allocated to devices. So opening up another CMD prompt, I can tell net to 10.0.0.11. Notice we are connecting to the 2610 HP switch and I can log into the device. Now notice two things please. Firstly, DHCP can be used to allocate an IP address to an HP switch and secondly I can log in without authentication to manager mode immediately. Now I can open up some more DOS prompts and in this example I'll tell net to 10.0.0.12 you can see once again this is a 26.10 switch and I can log into the switch. Here I'll tell net to 10.0.0.13 you can see that this is the 3500YL switch and once again I can log into that switch and lastly I could tell net to 100014 and you can see that this is the 5406ZL switch and I can log into that switch as well so I've been able to log in via telnet to the four switches because they were allocated IP addresses by the DHCP server which in this case is running on the Cisco router. Once again on the Cisco router typing the command show IP DHCP binding shows me that those IP addresses from 11 to 14 have been allocated to devices in this case the HP switches. Now I've labeled the network diagram with the interface numbers because I physically cabled this network but how would you know which interfaces are connected to which devices? And how do we know which 2610 has IP address 11 and which 2610 has IP address 12? And this is where LLDP or CDP can be very useful. So as an example, I'm going to start with the 5406, which has IP address 14 at the moment. If we type the command show CDP neighbor, you can see that firstly on port A1 we are connecting to a Cisco 857 router. So port A1 on the 5406 switch is connecting to the Cisco router. By the same token you can see that A2 is connecting to a Procurve 3500 switch and A3 is connecting to a Procurve 2600 switch. So just moving this out of the way. So double checking my diagram, according to the physical output on the switches, 
you can see that port A2 is connecting to the 3500, whereas in my diagram, I've got it as port A3. Now when I physically cabled this, the 3500 was cabled into port A2, and the 2610 was cabled into A3. But to make the diagram easier to read, I showed them on the diagram as follows. So I'll quickly change the cable, and then let's do the same command again to view the output. You can also view similar information by typing the command show LDP info remote device. And notice here you can see on port A2 we have the 3500 switch and on A3 we have the 2610 switch. You can see more detail by specifying an interface. So as an example if I specify A1 you can see that we have a Cisco router connected locally on port A1 and we are connected to FOST Ethernet 0 on the Cisco router. You can see the Cisco router's IP address. You can even see the firmware version on the Cisco router. If we looked at port A2, you would see that locally on the 5406, port A2 is connected to a Procurve 3500YL24G switch and the IP address of that switch is 100013. You can see similar kind of information if we looked at port A3. You can see on port A3 we are connecting to a 2610 with IP address 12. So I'm going to physically change the cables to match our diagram and then let's have a look at the output again. So just through this demonstration I hope you've seen a major advantage of LLDP and CDP. Both LLDP and CDP run at layer 2 of the OSI model. They are not reliant on IP addresses and they allow us to see directly connected devices. Once again on the 5406 if we do the command show LLDP info remote device we can see devices connected on interfaces. Please note firstly we only see directly connected devices. So on the 5406 we see three devices. In our topology notice there are actually five devices but the 5406 only sees the Cisco router, this 2610 and the 3500. The 5406 does not see this 2610 switch because it's not directly connected. What you'll also notice is the interfaces have now been updated. So on port A2 we have a 2610 and on port A3 we have a 3500 which is correct as per our diagram. Once again looking at details if we look at interface A3 you'll notice local interface A3 has the 3500YL connected to it and you can see the IP address of the switch. So lots of information is available just through the LLDP output command. By the same token if we look at port A2 you can see that the 2610-24 switch has got an IP address of 10.0.0.12. So this switch that we telneted to is this switch in our diagram and we can prove that once again by typing the command show LLDP info remote devices and you can see that our switch Port 1 is connected to a 5406 switch on port A2, which ties up with our diagram. By the same token, this switch with IP address 10011 displays its neighbors, so show LLDP info remote devices shows me that we are connecting to a 3500. If we look at the port which is 1, you can see the local port once again is port 1. We are connecting to a switch which is a 3500 and we are connecting to that switch on port 2. The switch has this IP address 100013. By the same token on the 3500 we could do the command show LLDP info remote devices and you can see that on port 1 this switch is connected to port A3 on a 5406 and port 2 is connected 
to a 2610 switch on port 1. So if LLDP is enabled, which it is by default on E-series switches, if you were consoled into the 5406, you could draw this entire topology just by looking at the information displayed with show LLDP or show CDP. Now on the 5406, if we do the command show CDP neighbors, notice it shows the Cisco router in the output. And by the same token, if we do show LLDP info remote device, we also see the Cisco switch in the output. However, on the Cisco router, if we do the command show CDP neighbors, notice we see no neighbors. And if we type the command show LLDP, notice it's not supported on this router. Cisco routers and switches support CDP by default. Not all Cisco devices support LLDP. So notice HP switches can view Cisco switches and routers, but Cisco switches and routers will not necessarily be able to see HP switches through CDP. HP switches receive CDP updates, but they don't send CDP updates. HP switches only send LLDP updates. So a Cisco device will need to be running LLDP to view the information, to see, if you like, the neighboring device.